and Neons. Starting lineups for Wake Forest. They come in with a record of 20 and 10. Mark Lucas, Kalani Owens, Tim Duncan, Charlie Harrison, and Randolph Childress. Childress, we have told you, is banged up. For Carolina, it's Rashid Wallace. Big game last night. Brian Reese, Eric Montross, Derek Phelps, and, of course, Donald Williams. And we'll be back with the opening tip right after this word from our good friends at Budweiser. Carolina, led by Dean Smith, with a win today, will have his 800th career victory. It's an unbelievable record for Dean Smith and the University of North Carolina and Wake Forest. However, not dealing with all that tradition, just dealing with a bunch of seven-foot guys who can play. Here's Wallace. His shot is short. Wake Forest appeared to be in his zone defense. Now, Randolph Childress getting some final instructions from Dave Odom, and he'll start up the court against the North Carolina man-to-man. -man. It's been well documented. Childress playing with a bad shoulder and a badly bruised knee. Here's Owens inside to Duncan, who loses it. Got to throw it a bit higher than that to get it over Wallace. Nice pass by Williams to Phelps. Phelps gets it back and scores. 2-0 Tar Heels. Wake Forest has to be very careful to limit the transition opportunities for North Carolina. Don't want them running up and down the court shooting layups. Crowd appears to be exhausted after that first game. First game, really a fine basketball game. You better get out and guard Lucas. Montross not close enough. That was a downtown three. And the Deeks lead by one. Critical, I think, that Childress and Lucas get off to a quick start. They had the threes against Carolina a week and a half ago when they won. Here's the hook by Montross. Now, you can't do much better than Wake Forest did right there defending against Von Montross. Lucas went right to him, and if Montross is going to make that little hook shot, Wake Forest is going to have a long afternoon. Childress. Last touch by Duncan. It'll be North Carolina basketball. Randolph Childress can be a very streaky three-point shooter, so I'm sure Dave Odom's not upset that he missed the first one. And Forrest would like to set its defense and then get down and help out when the ball goes down on the inside. Carolina with the ball and a one-point lead. Waking a man-to-man -man defense. Williams, nothing but air. Montross gets it back. Williams again is good. Boy, he has been on fire. 17 points last night. 20 points Saturday against Duke and 20 in the game against Wake 10 days ago. Shalati oh! Owens. That's for two. 6-5 game, North Carolina. The walk on Donald Williams. Harrison started to complain, thought the foul call was made on him. And it was a walk on Williams. Well, you sort of get in that complaint mode. You have to get a feel for the game. You have to get into that part of it, too. Boy, Randolph Childers has bounced off his own man right there. Remember that left shoulder, the right knee? He hurts about every place. There's places to hurt. about what an inspiration he was last night and 10 days ago against North Carolina when his shoulder popped out and popped back in. A nice job by Reese. Back to Duncan, left alone. Boy, Wake Forest, big guys have shown the ability to hit that little 16-foot jump shot. Montross has position inside. Nice job by Childress to get in the passing lane. Wallace, his shot in and out. made a great spin move. I think Rasheed Wallace was expecting Owens to turn the other way. We talked about North Carolina's inside game. But Wake Forest doing a nice job attacking North Carolina's big guys, and Trelawney Owens drawing the foul. Trelawney Owens has led Wake Forest in scoring 13 times this year. He's a 74% free throw shooter. Got a quick look at Jerry Stackhouse, who's come in off the North Carolina bench, replacing Brian Reese. 
you know, the freshman for North Carolina, Stackhouse, had 19 points and nine boards last night. Wallace had 17 shot, points, 16 rebounds, six block shots. And the senior misses the second with Stackhouse with the rebound. 16.45 to go in the first half, and it's a Wake Forest lead by two. Comes up with it. Ah, look at the hustle by Duncan. Well, you get into the ACC tournament semifinals, Jim, you better be prepared to play hard. Wake Forest seems to be starting aggressively. Here's Owens with a turnaround right over top of Montross. And a big rebound by Stackhouse. Just snatched that out of there. Interesting yesterday listening to Stackhouse and Wallace saying they don't feel like freshmen. And never this way, this way. This will be Carolina Bowl. Dave Odom encouraging his troops. He knows that North Carolina is going to attack you down on the baseline with their big guys, and that's the first thing you have to defend. Thus far, Wake Forest has done a pretty good job. Motion offense. Williams off balance, follows his shot and his foul. Not a lot of movement on the North Carolina offense with the exception of Donald Williams. That looked to me like Wake Forest may have been in a box and one defense against Donald Williams, which makes it all the more amazing that Williams is able to get that rebound and draw the foul from Trelawney Owens, his first. So the MVP of the Final Four from last year goes to the line. him to miss there. 80% free throw. Williams comes into this tournament averaging 15 points a game. Last year entering the ACC tournament, he was averaging just over 12 points a game, and then he had that great run through the ACC tournament and through the NCAA tournament. And he misses them both. Boy, Wallace, so quick. King in the ball game now for Wake Forest. Don't get getting his first pick, and Wallace has it. Partially blocked by King and lost out of bounds. 55 to go first half. Wake Forest leads by two. North Carolina on the attack once again. 15-55 to go first half. If you're just joining us, Virginia beat Duke in the first game. 66-61. Duke is out of it. Box and one defense by Wake Forest. Nice pass to stack out, and he has it partially blocked and still scores. Boy, what strength by stack out. Huntross makes an imposing figure in there to try to go around. Look at this hard. <laughs> gets down in that defensive stand. It looks like Owens for sure thinks he's playing against a wheel. Seven feet, 275 pounds. Shot clock at 10. Like to try to get the ball inside into the hands of Tim Duncan if you could. Shot clock's at four. They better hurry. Foul called. It's called on stack with one second on the shot clock. That's just a great play by Randolph Childress, the Wake Forest veteran guard. I know he said he never felt like a freshman, but he looked like one on this play. Childress with one fake, then another fake. Stackhouse leaves his feet both time. Randolph Childress, you can see the zero up there. That's just a great play by Childress to get a two-shot free throw of a very bad play. And he rolls the first one in. The newspapers this morning called Randolph Childress an inspiration player. Bad shoulder, bruised knee, 19 points. I'll tell you what he has. He has tremendous heart. Stackhouse and Williams go out. Calabria comes into the ball game. Reese, Salvadori, Phelps, and Montross now on the floor for North Carolina. And he rolls the second. That's how he's going to get the third. I didn't realize it was behind the three-point line. That makes the play made even better. <laughs> and it's a two-point lead. He'll try to extend it to three as Owens gets a breather. Correct, correct. Rusty LaRue in the ball game for the first time for Wake Forest. Three for three. He is special, isn't he? He is one tough son of a gun as well. Pass to Montrop too high. 
And you could see the expression on Derek Phelps' face. He knew that he threw that ball very poorly. You know, you might wonder how you can miss a guy that size, but actually it's pretty easy. That's three turnovers now for the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Good pump fake by LaRue. Back to Childress. He, too, does it. Back to LaRue. Oh, how about it? That's just a great job to move the ball, sacrificing two-point shots until they got an open three-point shot. Great job by Wake Forest. That's three. Makes it 14-8. to eight. Demon Deacons. Wake Forest back to the man-to-man. Banks -man. standing in front of Montrose. Tough shot. Lucas comes up with it. Back in the hands of Childress. That's where Wake Forest wants to keep it most of the time. That's a tough shot right there. <laughs> Get in there to Kevin Salvador. That's one thing. You penetrate by out on the perimeter. You got a couple seven foot guys underneath. That's an offensive foul. And it's a good call. It came out with the opposite hand and pushed. Wake Forest on the defensive end doing an excellent job moving the feet here. Lucas gets in the way and Phelps just shoves him aside. Looks like Phelps had room to get around and just pushed him. Marcus Lucas, Mark Lucas, got off early 10 days ago against North Carolina. He was smiling and having fun and already in this game he's laughing, he's having fun, he's loose and yet still at the same time intense. Gets it back. He pushed Childress out. <laughs> Calabria for three. Rebound by Banks. Wake Forest doesn't want the game to get into an up and dying down kind of thing. They'll take the easy basket. Great look to Lucas. What a pass. There's nobody anywhere close to the basket. The North Carolina defense all sort of in the top of the key area. Really packing it in in the middle. There's Montross with the jump for Salvador. He's going to get the foul. Great block out. Wake Forest is packing that defense inside. We said early in the game that they had to neutralize the inside game. Everybody comes to the ball. They, there's no help back there at all. Lucas with the back door. Excellent offensive concept by Wake Forest. A reminder to stay tuned at halftime for Volkswagen ACC Women's Report as you look at Eric Montross been able to get the ball inside to Montross. Wake Forest has done a nice job spreading the floor to try to create some opportunities. Shot clock down to 10. Duncan can't get a hand on it. job squaring himself to the basket and Duncan had a good run at it just couldn't grab it. Childress is going to take a rest. Stackhouse back in the ball game as well. Oh, great job coming off the screen. Calabria left alone beyond the arc. That three-pointer closes the lead to five. pay by hitting the three. Wallace has it partially blocked by Duncan, and Duncan's called for the foul. Couldn't get all ball. It's often difficult to guard Rashid Wallace down inside. He turns so quickly to the basket, gets off the floor so quickly. Dan Wallace is listed at 6'10", but for some reason he looks taller than that, especially when he's next to Eric Montross. They're almost eye to eye. Wallace has those nice long arms. Wallace looks skinny when he's next to Montross as well. Of course, most people do, but Wallace well, is 50 pounds lighter. He still gets some pretty good upper body strength. Banks goes out of the ballgame. Lucas, Harrison, LaRue. 
Owens and Duncan on the floor right now for Wake Forest. It's a good job by North Carolina to punch the ball inside. Put some pressure on Duncan and Owens, Duncan and Owens in there. 11.49 to go first half. Wake Forest 19, North Carolina 13. We'll be back after a word from our good friends at Budweiser. So everybody getting into the act. I'll tell you this, LaRue can fill him up from three-point. He had five out of six against Clemson earlier this year. Wake Forest has done a nice job handling the basketball. North Carolina comes out in a little pressure that time. And I think North Carolina would really like to try to do something to disrupt the Wake Forest flow on offense. Ball has kicked the ball. He'll reset it, bring it in. North Carolina beat Wake Forest 85-61 the first time they met this year. Carolina shot 61%, and as Dan mentioned earlier, Montross had 22 points. But then on March 2nd, Wake beat Carolina 68-61, and in that game, the Demon Deacons had nine three-pointers. Oh, look at Duncan. <laughs> Great pump fake had everybody in the air. And then almost lost his head. With all those white shirts flying by, he must have felt like he was in a blizzard. <laughs> this is a great pass by Childress. Watch Salvadori just come running at the basketball. There's the fake. Salvadori and Wallace both go by, and Duncan just can't get it up to the basket. Wallace is called for the foul. Stackhouse going to try to match up against Childress. Good defense by Stackhouse. Great help by Salvador. Carolina trying to cut into the six-point lead. This is Williams for three. Harrison came close to the steal, but Donald Williams made him pay for taking that gamble. Charlie Harrison to the baseline, out to Childress. And here come the Tar Heels. Duncan with a rebound. Great rebound by Duncan. That's not the kind of game Wake Forest wants to play. If they can get down and get a layup, great. But that little tough jump shot there, that's North Carolina style. Running up and down, great hoops. He stepped on the out of bounds. McGinnis getting some good minutes here in front of the home folks. He's from Charlotte. Stackhouse causes the fifth turnover for the Tar Heels when he stepped on the line. Kentucky's got Arkansas down by seven. It sort of hasn't been the Kentucky style. They're supposed to get way down and try to come back, but I think if you get way down to those Arkansas Razorbacks, you're likely to get buried. The midpoint of the first half. This is Owens. Owens made those shots, made a shot like that early in the basketball game. North Carolina giving up the outside jumper. Wake hasn't been able to really get it inside. Duncan blocked it. And Wallace puts it away. That cuts the Wake lead to one. Childress. Boy, he took it right into the big guys, didn't he? Childers to cut off the lane to the basket. This is McGinnis. And big rebound by Wallace in the putback. He did a great job holding Kalani Owens in place, reaching out that right arm, snagging the basketball, and he sort of went up to the basket almost all in one motion. What a future Wallace has. We talked about North Carolina's strength inside. You can see it right there. Childress shot off the back of the iron. Long rebound to Williams. Oh, that's a long shot. Another offensive rebound. Jump ball. No. Foul on Rusty LaRue. And that will get the Wake Forest fans on their feet. It's not very often that you're going to take the ball Sort of the old arm lock. Well, he's a football player. 
Football players should have clipped him. Although he is a quarterback. That's pretty physical for a quarterback. North Carolina out rebounding Wake Forest 18 to 6 and eight of those offensive rebounds. Kick out to Calabria. He's got the off. And the Tar Heels have the lead. Whereas early in the game, Wake Forest had those three point shots going in the basket and they ran out to the lead. Now North Carolina asserting themselves on the inside. LaRue will fire for That's a tough shot. shot. Banks inside. Oh. And Montross comes up with it. Seven fifty-nine to go in the first half. It's a pretty good one. Car Heels leading by two. With its available new 4.6-liter, 205-horsepower V8 engine, Cougar XR7 makes a powerful statement among 94 models. With a new interior that includes standard dual airbags, it also makes a safe one. 94 Cougar also makes a strong financial statement. Equipped with Cougar's standard V6 engine, it features the lowest sticker price of any car in its class, just $16,855. Cougar XR7. Great features, great lines, great bottom line. Take a good look at your nearest Mercury dealer. Without I think he's trying to demonstrate to Ernie Nestor over there what's going on. Oh, nice power move by the big guy. Trelawney Owens is only about six feet eight. And if Montross is going to be able to catch the ball and move that quickly to the basket, there's just very little Wake Forest is going to be able to do. Duncan and King both on the bench, the two big men for Wake Forest. Oh. Owens with a bank in shot. Wake Forest needs to attack inside. They had good success early going inside with the pass or with the dribble. Dropping the defense in on the ball and then kicking it out for perimeter jump shots. They can't stay on the perimeter. They've got to get it inside. And you know where North Carolina wants to go with it. Phelps makes it a 27-23 game with Carolina. trying to steal some minutes for his starters to rest on the bench. They were here until almost 11.30 last night. They played the last game of the day. This foul will be against Ryan Reese. He just ran into him there. Not a really good foul. There was 10 seconds left on the shot clock. The Deacons seem to be back on their heels a little bit. And Reese just plowed right into him. Ryan Reese has really struggled this year. How about that? Nebraska beating Missouri, 98-91. Missouri almost lost yesterday. Got by beating Colorado by two. That Big 8 tournament, year in and year out, is a wild affair. I'll tell you this, though, Dan. That's significant in the fact that the Nebraska now, that doesn't help Georgia Tech. Four games like that. Other teams that get in. I think Nebraska was in the tournament anyhow. I think that the key to that game is nobody's really believed in Missouri all year. That might cost Missouri a number one seed when the pairings come out for the NCAA tournament. But other teams like Seton Hall and Georgetown advancing in the Big East, of course, those are bubble teams. Well, I understand that, but my theory is Georgia Tech's going to get in anyway. Here's Owens. Oh. And a rebound by Stackhouse. 6-10 to go, first half. Calabria lines it up behind. His third three-pointer. He has nine points. Dave Odom just shaking his head on the Wake Forest bench. That's transition basketball. It's best You let the shooter line up behind three, get his feet set, and just bury the thing. Carolina's biggest lead of the afternoon. Rasheed Wallace certainly does a lot of talking to the officials. That's two fouls now on Wallace. And immediately Dick Raparo goes up and says, just play ball, don't talk to us. We'll officiate. Well, I think that one thing that he'll find out is the less he talks to the officials, the fewer times he'll hear that whistle blow. There's North Carolina's tremendous rebounding advantage. Wake Forest, if they're missing the shot, North Carolina's getting the rebound. There's been no second chance opportunities for Wake Forest. 
And while they shot very well early in the game, their shooting has tailed off here in the last few minutes, and North Carolina has gone out to the lead. Toward the conclusion of our telecast, we'll be announcing the players of the game. That's brought to you by Nations Bank. At the line, the 6'8 senior. Bladenboro, North Carolina, and he misses the second. Quickly, they go ahead to Calabria. He kicks it back out to Phelps. And this will be called on Lucas. Dave Odom telling his players, you guys have to get back. North Carolina really pushing the ball up the court. Phelps with that penetration move before Dave Odom's defense could get set. And as a result, Montross with another offensive rebound. Too many opportunities for North Carolina. Tar Heels leading by six. Trying to add to that. Montross puts it back. Eric Montross. This is a pretty good run by the Tar Heels. <laughs> Eric Montross has not had the kind of year I think that people were expecting from him. I think it's hard with the year he's had to talk about Montross as a disappointment, but nonetheless, that's what you hear a lot around the ACC. He looks like he's serious about this today. Ryan Reese replaces Rashid Wallace. This is a 10-3 run by the Tar Heels. Wake's largest lead was eight. Shot by Owens. Gets that one to go down. He's now got seven points. And North Carolina rushes the ball into the offensive zone. Reese takes it into the paint. Duncan blocks it away. Now Wake Forest will run. Lucas left alone. Instead goes to Owens, and this foul will be called on Calabria. That was a good decision by Blucas to not take that three-point shot. If it goes in, well, it's grand. If not, then North Carolina's running back the other way. The Tar Heels don't mind that quick tempo. Wake Forest, I think, really needs to try to create situations where it's more of a half-court game. Yes, sir. Okay. That's a pretty good company there for Mr. Duncan. That 109 block shots by Duncan is a Wake Forest record, obviously. The first team freshman all-tournament team. What a year he's had. Trelawney Owens have a, having a pretty good year himself. He sure is, averaging 16 points a game, 74% free throw shooter. You can see his average lower against North Carolina, but again, that's not surprising with the size that North Carolina can bring to bear inside, and Owens just not that big. Calabria gets a hand going out. Williams comes in for him. Wake has beaten Duke twice this year, Carolina once. Dave Odom over the last two years is 5-3 and three against national champions. <laughs> <laughs> He'd trade it all if he could have one of those national championships himself. Isn't that the truth? Oh, great job by Duncan. He got away with pushing Montross aside, claiming the basketball. Montross doesn't say a word. He just turns his head and goes up the court. Tar Heels by six. 4.15 to go first half. Turnover. It's a 2 on one Reese is fouled by Lucas. And that's two of Mark Lucas. That's a great foul by Lucas because he got him before he got in his shooting motion. That's only six fouls on the Demon Deacons. Lucas just reaches in, tries to smack at the basketball. Definitely not a shooting foul. That's foul number six. You can see Reese looking up there with a mild surprise. Lucas tried to help Reese up, but he wouldn't take it. Instead, he went to the officials and said that should be a two-shot intentional foul. That doesn't bother Lucas. I think Lucas is one of those kids that doesn't let anything bother him. That's a great foul. foul will be called against Harrison. Again, Reese is on the floor. Brian Reese 
being pushed around. That's the seventh team foul against the Demon Deacons. So they'll be shooting one and one, Carolina at the line. Wake Forest really has no choice but to try to play very physically inside. You got to beat those people to the spots and then you got to keep them out of the spots because they'll just back you in. You know, we talked about Brian Reese struggling this season. He had a heart-to-heart one-on-one talk with Dean Smith two weeks ago. I think Dean was concerned with his effort. And Reese was concerned with his scoring. His scoring production was down, and he thought Dean was upset about that. So they got everything straightened out, and he's been playing pretty well. That's his first point today. Carolina continues to be all over the offensive board. Shot clock has not really been a factor other than once. Here's Owens, Salvadori all over him. Back to Childress. Outside to LaRue for three. Dan, how did he find him out there? He knew it was going to be. Tough pass. <laughs> Childress got lost with all the big guys and kicked it way back out. Now, it just, just didn't throw that pass just out to him. He had to throw it up and out to get it out there. King gets called for the pushing Montross. King's about the only guy out there big enough to push Montross. Montross had seven points, ten rebounds, six blocks last night against Florida State. Academic All-American. Three-point grade point average in speech communications. Big strong player who's capable of dominating a game, but with the players that he's had at North Carolina, hasn't ever had to do that. He's had some big games, he's had some disappointing games in terms of scoring, but I really like him as a basketball player. Rebound by Salvador. This will be an offensive foul away from the ball called on Salvador. It was a technical foul called on Salvador. I don't know what he was what he was complaining about. Now that is an unsporting technical. He obviously said something to the officials. He received a technical foul. That counts in his toward his total of five fouls and you're out. So that's a technical foul that counts toward his five foul total. It also counts among the team fouls for North Carolina, so that's team foul number nine. Wake Forest gets two free throws and the basketball. Dean Smith immediately takes Salvadori out and puts Reese in. Trelawney Owens with the block out. He's got the elbow there in Salvadori's stomach. Salvadori gets the ball. Just turns and shouts at the official, you know, if you're going to complain, don't do it after you have the ball, for heaven's sake. Surprise, Rasheed Wallace does an awful lot of sniping at the officials, and that's just not very much like North Carolina. That's not very good discipline by Kevin Salvador. 3.17 to go first half. We'll be back after a word from our good friends at Budweiser. Okay. So far, 14 points after offensive rebounds. North Carolina making its advantage inside work. The officials are going to let them play, but they're not going to let them mouth off. Tar Heels by four. We approach the three-minute mark in the first half. Stackhouse battling inside against Owens. This is Owens for two more. Owens has had that jump shot going. He has, he has 11, Dan, and it's a two-point game. Takes it into the paint, kicks it back out. Inside to Reese, and he can't handle it. That was a tough pass. Seven turnovers for the Tar Heels now. A lot of North Carolina's turnovers have really been of the unforced variety, just haven't handled the ball very well. Here's Eric Montross against Tim Duncan. Duncan trying to stay in front of him and doing a pretty nice job. Montross certainly not open on that sequence. You know, Duncan gives up about 70 pounds, too. And he's holding his own. How about Rusty LaRue? He has nine points. Now to guard him. He was five for 
six beyond New York against Clemson. And it looks like he's got that hot hand here today. Three for four. Well, that's the story that's developing here. It's North Carolina's inside power against Wake Forest's three-point shooting. Great block out by Owens. 145 to go in the first half. Deacons by one. See Wake Forest very comfortable having the ball in the hands of Randolph Childress. A little bit out of the range of Trelawney Owens. But again, a wide open shot created by Randolph Childress's penetration to the basket. Inside of Montross. They double down on him. This is draws a crowd, doesn't he? He sure does. And Reese loses it again. Childress! Gets your veteran guard. He can sense the opportunity. Tough shot, but you're confident that Childress can make that most of the time. Three-point lead by the Deacons. This will be a blocking foul. Childress goes down. You know, Dave Odom's got to hold his breath. The ball squirts out here. Childress grabs it. Now, again, Wake Forest doesn't want to get in a running game, but Childress right here figures he can take it to the basket. Makes a tremendous move right there. An 11-1 Wake Forest run. Childress came up trying to move that shoulder again. Every time he hits, I think he thinks about it, too. Definitely feels it. Jerry Stackhouse came off the bench for 19 points, nine rebounds last night, and he has three points this afternoon. He was 11 of 13 from the free throw line last night. Number one, that's impressive that he shoots that well from the line, but number two, to get to the free throw line that many time, times means that he's really slashing hard to the basket. Makes them both. Cuts Wake's lead to one. Very interesting. North Carolina getting all those offensive rebounds, punching it inside. They stretched out a pretty big lead, and then Wake Forest has answered them with the three-point shooting and the perimeter game. 40 seconds left in the half. About a 19-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Shot clock is down to 13. Here's Childress with 10 on the shot clock. Oh, my. Seven way. Shot clock is now off. You see the time remaining in the half. Nicely done. Oh, Phelps almost had the steal. Childress has time. Phelps does have the steal. with Paul Cameron. We'll be back right after this. Today's ACC action is brought to you by... Carolina, it's been too easy for Wake on the offensive end. I think North Carolina has to do something to change the defensive tempo of this game. And the way Carolina has dominated the boards, they're getting great high percentage shots. And that certainly has been uh, a big factor. Take a look at the uh, sprint assisting coach here, and you'll see Carolina's in a paint a lot. Well, North Carolina's on the inside a lot, but they've also gotten some shots from the perimeter. As we look at Wake Forest, Wake Forest mainly operating on the perimeter. You can see Wake mainly on the left side, mainly on the perimeter, very few underneath the basket. Anything outside that perimeter is Calabrian Williams. The interesting thing to me is that with North Carolina's tremendous advantage inside, the quartet of Rashid Wallace, Eric Montross, Jerry Stackhouse, and Kevin Salvadori has taken a total of only 12 shots. And six of those shots have been taken by Wallace, and most of them have come off offensive rebounds. The guys on the perimeter have to throw the ball to the big guys inside. They're not being utilized as effectively as they might be. Dan, how about this? Last night we saw North Carolina wear down the Seminoles. Nine players got nine or more minutes. How about in this game? Well, I think North Carolina, with all the talented personnel that they can bring to bear, that's always a concern for the opposition. 
remember the game's 40 minutes long. Yeah, Wake's got the lead at halftime, but we still got halfway to go. Nobody knows that better than Dave Odom. Here's Owens. And North Carolina comes out. Defensive tempo picked up a little bit. Harrison left alone for a second. Now goes inside to Owens, and he has it blocked down by Montross. Montross came over to help, and even though Owens seemed to handle Wallace pretty well, Montross was right there. That's where the ball's got to go. Montross goes back with a left-handed hook, and Reese with the follow. Second half starts much the way the first half went. North Carolina with three chances, two offensive rebounds, and finally it goes in the basket. That six lead changes for the game. Wake turns it over. No question about it. They'll be shooting two. We talked about North Carolina's defensive pressure. The pressure out on the ball that time caused the mishandling of the basketball, miscommunication between Harrison and Lucas. And Harrison just mugs him, just wraps his arm around him. And as soon as he wraps those arms, you can see official Dick Paparo running through your screen, making the intentional foul sign. So the intentional foul means that Phelps will get two shots. And the penalty, really, is not the two shots. That's what he gets in any shooting foul. But North Carolina gets the ball. So the Tar Heels with a chance to start very quickly in the second half. Tar Heels got to the finals last year, lost to Georgia Tech because Phelps did not play. He was injured in the semifinal game against Virginia. And he has seven points, misses the second free throw. 18.59 to go in the ball game. It's a two-point lead by the Tar Heels. Dave Odom, you don't want your team to start slowly out of the blocks in the second half. You'd rather be playing from in front than trying to come back against North Carolina. Line Reese with a reverse layup. Nicely done. Reese attacks that baseline as well as anybody in this league. Lucas failed to cut him off. And just like that, the Tar Heels by four. Owens and Wallace really going at one another down on the inside. This will be called on Wallace. You know, with Wake Forest leading at halftime, a lot of the talk here at the Charlotte Coliseum was about a Wake Forest Virginia final. But as the hit said, there's a lot of basketball to be played. That's three on Wallace. Well, that talk isn't premature in relation to Virginia because they're already in the final, but it's extremely premature concerning the winner of this basketball game. We've got a long way to go here. Wake Forest got down pretty well in the first half and came back. Terrific game by Jamal Robinson and Harold Dean for Virginia. The Cavaliers won 66-61 over Duke. North Carolina in the zone. Reese did a nice job getting out and covering up Trelawney Owens. He had that short jump shot from the corner going in the first half. That's a little out of his range. Oh, it's too strong. Here's Reese again. He comes up with it. Childress splits the difference and rolls it in. What a great shot by Childress. He has 12 points. And a great decision by Harrison to give him the ball. It's Wake's first bucket of the second half. Now that's four fouls on Wallace. There's a lot of calls that occur in a basketball game that could go one way or the other, and referees being human beings. If somebody's barking at him all the time, and Rasheed Wallace tends to do that, he's not going to get very many breaks. If anything, he draws their attention. Right there, he just blasts Trelawney Owens. There's no question about that call. Owens is standing there, and he hammers him. Now we find blood. Lucas appears to be bleeding. We've had everything in this tournament, I guarantee you. See, now, the rule is when you're bleeding, you have to go out of the game until the blood stops. If there's just blood on the uniform, you don't necessarily have to go out of the game unless the uniform is saturated. And that's, uh, you know, if you're going to have to bleed, that's not a bad place because they can wrap a bandage on that and you can go right back in the game. Of course, that's his blood, not mine. 
You'd be wearing gloves over there bandaging you, too. Huh. North Carolina back in the zone defense. Remember, Wallace has four. Shot clock is down to eight. Well, Rude drew some attention, didn't he? Shoulders fires and hits for three. He has 15 points, and it's a one-point game. Foul called against Tim Duncan. He and Wallace continue to go at it. Wake Forest leads by one. 16-48 to go in the ball game, and Wallace goes out. Salvador. Now there's comes Wallace. In. Wallace pushing again down in there. He's very fortunate he didn't get another foul called. The foul's called on Duncan because Duncan is grabbing onto him. That's three fouls now on Tim Duncan. Uh, Harrison from behind takes it away from Williams. To Larue, to Childress. Owens, he's had that shot working today. He sure has. He has 13 points. Wake bars by three. Stan King getting up on the bench. I think he's going to come in for Tim Duncan. You don't want Duncan picking up his fourth personal foul. Stackhouse. And this will be called on Owens. Foul's called on Childress. Foul's on Randolph Childress. So that'll be Childress's second. 13 foul. And Duncan does go out of the ball game. King comes in. So Stan King is going to be asked to play some very serious minutes here for Wake Forest. Lucas comes back in now that he's bandaged. And Harrison goes out. King is a young man who averages fewer than five minutes a game. So he's going to have to go a while here. You know, a guy like Stackhouse who's so strong and so quick around the basket, the fact that he can make free throws effectively, he's going to score a lot of points. He has six now. And that cuts the Wake Forest lead to one. Defense for the Tar Heels. They're going to try to trap. Owens left alone again at the top of the key. And LaRue gets the rebound. If you can beat that trap by North Carolina, you're going to get some open jump shots. The question is whether or not you can knock them down. Wake Forest did not on that occasion, but they were able to claim the offensive rebound. Childress has set up a lot of the offense with his penetration this afternoon. Here he is. That's another three. three more. Okay, he's either going to set it up or he's going to finish it. Childress his mom likes it. it. She is having some kind of fun at this tournament. Salvadori. That's his first bucket of the game. I think it's his first shot of the game. Points being scored in this basketball game, and you would think that in the long run that's to the advantage of North Carolina. Shot clock down to 10. Childress wanted a call, didn't get one. There was a lot of contact, and Dick Favaro comes in. Got the block on the ball. We'll be back after a word from our good friends at Bud Light. Game. This is the second semifinal of our doubleheader here at the Charlotte Coliseum. Tim Brandt and Dan Bonner with you this afternoon. We talked about Wake Forest maintaining its shooting touch. They are 7 of 11 to make it 8. Shot by Childress. Eight for 12 from three-point range. Childress now with 21 points to go along with his eight assists. He hit that with four on the shot clock. And it's 53-48 Wake. Duncan back in the ball game with those three personal fouls. And another rebound for Duncan. Ahead to Banks. And Banks wisely holds up and gets it back to Lucas. Children 
Lucas has the hot hand, no question about it. Lucas and LaRue. Look at McGinnis trying to force him into Montreux. He wants a foul on that particular play. Now he's yelling at the referees. Childress has to knock that off. He thought McGinnis had him on the arm. This will be called on Lucas. Good call. Stackhouse, such good quickness out on the wing. Lucas is nominally a guard, but wasn't quick enough that time to stay with Stackhouse. Three fouls now on Lucas. And I think that goes along with the point that you were making, Tim. North Carolina, with all the people they play, with all the pressure they exert on, you can't wear you down. The fouls starting to pile up for Wake Forest. Duncan with three, Lucas with three. Start playing defense with your body and not your feet. Childress goes out. Lucas goes out of the ball game now. Here we go, right here. Now, Childress has dominated the ball for Wake Forest. It'll be interesting to see what goes on without him in there. That's a pass. It's going to go in the books as a shot attempt. Dan, you were talking about the high-scoring game and how that is an advantage for Carolina. Wake Forest this year has been in eight games that have had 70 points or more scored, and they've lost seven of them. Which also says... Great pass. Defensive reaction by Kevin Salvadori. Salvadori loses it on the way up. And he's allowed to recover that. Outside to Williams. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. And Williams is now fouled. Williams showing his quickness getting to the basket. Foul called on the road. For the Nations Bank Players of the Game Award, Nations Bank will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference Postgraduate Scholarship Program. Since 1971, contributions to the program have helped fund postgraduate educational opportunities for over 50 deserving student-athletes. You know how tough a tournament Randolph Childress has had? As he was coming back in the basketball game, his assistant coach, Jerry Wainwright, was gesturing toward the referees, and as he did so, he elbowed Randolph right in the head. Take a Watch look at Childers trying to come back in the game. Boom. Thanks, coach. That's Jerry Wainwright. Turns around, he sees it's Randolph. That's a good way to lose your job, Jerry. You knock Randolph out of the game. You're in trouble there, bud. Oh. Randolph, he has had a tough time. Calabria comes back in for Williams. 12.57 to go in the ball game. 53-49 Wake Forest. North Carolina not able to keep the ball out of the hands of Childress. They get him to pick it up that time. Childress has done a nice job handling the ball. Here comes the double team. Back to Owens. McGinnis with a steal. Carolina doing something to change the defensive tempo. The traps force Childers to give up the basketball. Banks with a strong move but has it blocked. Outside to Harrison. Oh, nice follow by Banks. Under 12 minutes to play. Offensive rebounds have been few and far between for the Deacons, but that was a big one by Scooter Banks. Oh, what a hook by Montreux. He has 10 points. I think they need to put the ball in the big guy's hands a little bit more. He looks like he's ready to go on the offensive end today. I'll tell you this, he wasn't right next to the basket that time either. Really a tough pass right there. 
It'll be Wake Forest basketball. We've got 10.56 to go in this semifinal game. It's 55-53, Wake Forest. Wake leads the ACC in team defense, allowing just 65 points per game, but it looks like this game will top that. Last couple of minutes of this ball game, North Carolina's done a better job keeping the ball out of the hands of Randolph Childress. Childress with 21 points and eight assists. It sort of represents 67 percent of Wake Forest's offense today. So you'd be well advised to keep the ball away from him. Derek Phelps all over Childress now. This is Lucas. Shot clock was running down. Good defense by Wake Forest, forcing a difficult shot. Or by North Carolina, forcing Wake Forest into a difficult shot. You know, in the earlier game, we saw Grant Hill go to Harold Dean defensively in the second half, and it really took away from Hill offensively. He lost his legs. Now Phelps will guard Childress, another big defensive move, one of the better defenders in the league. Harrison. That's for three. And that's where Childress has been so dangerous. Having the ball in the open court and making the proper decisions. Phelps at the other end. And the follow by Montross. I think Duncan actually hit it while it was up there, but the ball went in the basket, so it doesn't make any difference anyway. I thought the ball was in the cylinder. This is Childress. He's left alone for a second and drills it. It's just rain and threes. Randolph Childress shaking his head. What a shooting exhibition by Wake Forest. Good pass. And the bucket. Now you lose a seven-foot guy inside. 61-57 with nine and a half to play. Ten three-pointers. Salvador with the rebound and kicks that to Phelps. Carolina wants to run. Wake, for the most part, has done a good job getting back on defense. He's yelling to the official who's in the cylinder. There's all kinds of hands up there around the rim. It's almost impossible to see what's going on. These teams just keep going back and forth. Wake Forest by two. Out to Lucas. Harrison. With a big rebound. Harrison's missed a couple of threes, so he passes that one up. Good ball movement. And Owens has 15 points. North Carolina trying to create some defensive pressure, flying at the shooters with some double teams, but if Wake Forest is going to make open jumpers, not really much you can do. Right now is swarming. Offensive on Childress. And that's three on Randolph. 7.52 to go in the ballgame. People offer small cars for seemingly low prices. Moves into the tournament semifinals today for the first time in his coaching career at Wake Forest. Now trying to do something else new, move into the championship game. North Carolina's defense created a turnover. Wake now in his zone. Childress with three personal fouls. 63-59, Deacons, this is McGinnis, and he gets the roll. Comes the trap. Three on two, but they bring it back out to Childress. Wake Forest has done a great job beating the pressure and then spotting up behind the three-point lane. Down to LaRue. Shot over Montross, but a big rebound. Lucas.
Lucas looks like he's had a couple of openings from beyond the three-point lane range and hasn't squeezed it off. 20 on the shot clock. On McGinnis. Boy, Childress, can he feel that body pressure and try to throw the foul every time? Every time now, North Carolina coming to Childress with the double team, trying to make him give up the basketball. And that's not, with the kind of game he's had, that's great strategy. Make somebody besides Childress beat you. And speaking of being beaten, we'll have a new number one. How about that? Kentucky over Arkansas. Earlier today, Missouri lost to Nebraska. looking for the ball against Owen. They double down on him. Get it to Stackhouse. His foul is with King. Six and a half minutes to play. Stackhouse is just always around the basket. Duncan will come back into the ballgame. King will go out. Calabria comes back in. Phelps back in. McGinnis goes out. And Montross goes out. Dave Odom doing a nice job getting King some minutes to get that young man right there a rest. Don't want him to pick up fouls just because he's tired. Jerry Stackhouse with six points today. He averages 12. And had 19 last night. Seems like every time you look up, Stackhouse is on the free throw line. Five for five from the line in today's game to go along with his 11 for 13 last, last night. Only has one field goal today. Wow. Arkansas has lost today. Duke lost today to Virginia. Missouri lost today. And Missouri lost. So one, two, and three have gone down. Carolina's number four. Connecticut also went down today. Let's see who that foul's on. It's on Calabria. So Connecticut lost today to Providence. So number one, number two, number three, and number five have all lost. Number four are the guys in the white shirts. Long pass over to Blucas. Calabria coming after the ball, knocks him down. Rasheed quickly retreats. He doesn't want to guard Randolph. Here comes the trap. And the penetration. Oh, what a pass. Rasheed Wallace, and he better be careful, or he's going to get himself a technical five. That is five on Wallace. And Dean will use every bit of time he has here. He averages nine points. Six here today as he leaves the ball game. Five rebounds, six points. Now last night he had 17 points and 16 rebounds to go along with six block shots. Not the same kind of performance today. He's been in foul trouble most of the day. Randolph Childress comes at you. He just smacks him right across the head. There isn't any question about that foul. Now last night Wallace played 31 minutes. He scored 17 points, 16 rebounds, and three blocks. He leaves early today. For well, the lineup that Dean Smith has in the ball game right now, Jerry Stackhouse, Eric Montross, Calabria, Phelps, and Donald Williams. So a little bit smaller lineup for North Carolina. Six minutes to go in the ball game. And a four-point Wake Forest lead. Boy, it's been a fun afternoon. It really is. ACC semifinal. Terrific. Oh, that's just, that's a big-time play. Donald Williams. Williams. Off-balance shot gives him eight points. Crowd thought the room may have walked. This is Duncan. Get it back to a guard. It's a camp. Why get it back to the guard? He takes it himself and gets fouled. 
Dallas own Stackhouse. That was almost a drive to the basket in self-defense. He couldn't pass it to anybody. Great job by Calabria. Great job by Phelps to deny the pass. He loses the ball and says, okay, just take it to the basket, and Stackhouse can't stop him. Stackhouse picks up his second personal. Now, Rusty LaRue will go out of the ball game as Trelawney Owens checks back in. Two shots. Duncan is a 74% free throw shooter. First team freshman all tournament team. Randolph Childress standing at half court with a towel. All conference team, rather. He's had 10 double doubles this year. There goes Randolph. If I'm the coach of Randolph Childress, I catch the towel from him, too. Whatever Randolph wants. Duncan, very quiet offensively today. He's only got four points. But like so many of the other freshmen in the ACC, he is very composed. get down and help on that one. That's a great, great hook shot by Montrose. He's got it working with both the left hand and the right hand today. 12 points for Montrose now at 69-67 with five minutes to go in the ball game. Phelps is doing everything he can to try to keep the ball out of the hands of Childress. Very nearly came up with a steal that time. And when you think of the three top defenders in the Atlantic Coast Conference, you have to think Phelps, Hill, and Cornell Parker. Well, that's exactly the way I think about them, but I'd put them in reverse order. Oh, I didn't mean any specific order. Those are the three top guys. It's almost impossible to guard Randolph Childress one-on-one -on -one and stop him every time. What you have to hope you can do is stop him at key points in the basketball game. Here's Banks left alone. Uh, you don't want to get too conservative with your offense. Ten seconds on the shot clock, and they're going to try to double-team children, and it doesn't make any difference. To Duncan. And a great by Banks. How did he do that? 71-67, Wake Forest. This is a tough matchup for Lucas right here. Inside again to Montross, and he has taken away by Banks. Banks made the tip. Owens got it. Phelps is exhausted. Lucas gets it back. Phelps is exhausted. Lucas keeps passing up that three. Under four minutes to play now. This foul is on Phelps. That's two. That's 17 fouls now. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation. The rest of the way. Reese goes out. Stackhouse comes in. An expression on Derek Phelps' face after he was trying to chase Randolph Childress up the court. He was pointing at his teammates, asking for some help. He was really dragging. This comes not a moment too soon. Now, Stackhouse went out of the game, but McGinnis didn't come in for Stackhouse. He was coming in for Phelps. Right. Phelps now goes out. You see, he just looks like he's beat. Catch a couple of seconds on the bench, and he's got to come back in. They need him on the floor. Randolph Childress now with 27 points. He had 19 last night. Have we seen some guard play in this tournament or what? Wow. After this, from Schick. Bonus situation. Both teams have three timeouts remaining. And the, the difference in this basketball game, there you can see the front line scoring. The last meeting, 31, today 36. But the difference in the game, it's a six-point game. Wake Forest has made six more three-point baskets. the hot hand in the first half. He was three for four from three-point land. On your side, Here he is again. Ahead to Banks. That's great defense by Calabria. Great job by Calabria. Williams. That's for three. Carolina wants a time. Three 
42 to play. Wake by three will return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. S&K and the ACC are a winning combination when it comes to positive achievement among America's youth. We're proud to sponsor the S&K ACC Operation Outreach. Operation Outreach is a total commitment to education, and it involves the student athletes of all nine ACC universities. At the ACC tournament, area middle school students receive their educational message one-on-one. -on -one. S&K and the ACC, teaming up for Operation Outreach. Our universities are reaching out to their communities. We're excited that student athletes and college staff are volunteering with United Way programs. All of us have a responsibility to give something back, and it's a vital part of our student athletes' learning experience. Let's go. We're touching ACC communities in a wonderful way by helping people who really need help. Together, we're making a difference, a difference that lasts a lifetime. ACC and United Way, reaching out to our community. Three-point game, Wake Forest, 322 to go. Dante Calabria gets in the way and then gets out, loses his footing as he does it, but Travis Banks loses his concentration. North Carolina gets the ball. Donald Williams, long three-point shot. It's a three-point game. North Carolina's defense turning it around right there. Great jump stop by Williams. Plenty of time left in this basketball game. Zone defense for North Carolina. I think you can expect them to trap. They're trying to find out where Blucas is. Dave Odom says, stay right there. Childress does. 15 on the shot clock. and missed those two threes. He does not look confident. Five on the shot clock for Childress. Oh, five! You can't be serious! You cannot be serious with that shot. Wait by six. Williams. North Carolina needs a hoop in the worst way. Dean trying to get their attention. He wants them to attack. Well, he wants them to score. Huh? You can understand it. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Nice play by Phelps. Good bucket by Phelps. Well, you need a defensive stop right now. It's a four-point basketball game. I'd double-team Randolph Childress. Anything to make him give up the ball. Game clock is down to two minutes. They double Childress, the Owens. Shot clock is at 15. Out the blue, gets the two. Salvador with the rebound. Williams oh, again. Oh, goodness. That was a tough shot. It has been physical. Stackhouse gets the foul. Big rebound by Trelawney Owens. Calabria will come back into the ballgame for Carolina. Salvadori goes out. Remember now, both teams over the limit. It's a one and one, however. That's eight team fouls against North Carolina. So it's a one and one opportunity. So it's still not two shots. So this is a big front end of the one-on-one one by Trelawney Owens. Well, that's what I said. They're over the limit. One-on-one. 139 to go in the ball game. There's so many limits in this game there, Tim. Phelps won't be on the bench long. He now has 18 points. He's had a big game. He really has, as you look at Banks, who came in and contributed heavily. He made about four or five of those little jump shots from the corner. 4 for 7 from the line. 4 for 8. Lucas tips it. North Carolina ball.
correct call. Dave Odom doesn't agree with it. But that ball was off Wake Forest. One and a half minutes to play. Stackhouse drills it. 77-74 Wake. Plenty of time left in the game. This is Harrison. And this foul is on Calabria. That's his third. And that's the ninth team foul. Now one more. That's what Dan was talking about. They'll be shooting two. Phelps comes back in. McGinnis goes out. So it's Montross, Stackhouse, Phelps, Williams, and Calabria on the floor right now for UNC. At the line is Harrison. He's a 74% free throw shooter. Had only seven points last night. And he has seven now. Wake Forest gets a timeout. Dave Odom tells Randolph Childress he wants it right now. All right, so Wake Forest has two timeouts left. North Carolina has two timeouts left. Now you might wonder, well, why does Dave Odom call a timeout in the middle of his own player's free throw? Rather, why not let him shoot it and make the free throw? Well, Dave, Odom's want, Dave Odom wants to talk to his team, and he wants the timeout right now, and he's not guaranteed that Harrison is going to make the free throw, so he's wanted, he wants to talk to his crew. that Dave Odom has in Charlie Harrison. There's Randolph Childress. Charlie Harrison, the 6'1 senior, transfer from Georgetown. He's had six double-figure games in the last 11 outings. And that's an excellent call. That is four on Childress. And you have to wonder why Childress would do that. That is, Childress has had such an outstanding game that is just not a smart play at all. That's not a risk worth taking at this point in the ballgame. Now, what's Childress? He's sort of going to stick his shoulder into him. If Childress sets up and is facing him, that's the rule. You have to have both feet on the floor. You have to be facing the dribbler. Childress never did. I don't know why he even risks the foul in that situation. So Phelps goes to the line. The best he can hope for there is a no call. That's a very bad play by Children. Derek Phelps right at his average with nine points today. Makes the first. He's now hit 76 of his 100 free throws this year. Team to play. Dean Smith going after his 800th career victory today. And this foul will be on Williams. He grabbed the arm of Duncan. Wake Forest, a pretty good free throw shooting team. Duncan, almost 74%. That's the play you have to make. Be aggressive, go after the basketball. Wake Forest led the ACC almost the entire year in free throw shooting, and Duncan's another good one, 74%. 16 for 21 today from the line is Wake Forest. He's got two. He now has five points. Pushes the lead back to four. Three for three from the line. Now there's some freshmen who've just really stepped up in this tournament. This is the tournament of the freshmen. Missed that one. Four point game. One minute to play. Childers has to be careful now. He's got four fouls. Big possession. This foul called on Owens. Owens hurt his knee. He just twisted it a little bit. Three fouls on Toronto Owens. Stackhouse does not. They, they, they just knock knees right there. Stackhouse got his knee into the knee of Toronto Owens. I think at this point in the game. So we go from freshman at one end to freshman at the other as Jerry Stackhouse goes to the line. 
Stackhouse has 10. He's been a cool customer from the free throw line. He's now one below his average. And seven of seven on the free throw line. The Labrie goes out. McGinnis comes back in. That's for defensive purposes. Fifty-three seconds remain. He makes them both. Wake Forest by two. Nicely done. Nice job to move the ball up in the front court. Here's the senior Harrison. Now they're going to have to shoot the ball again. Gets it back to Childress. That's where you want it if you're Wake Forest. 35 seconds left. Oh, he had him open. Possession arrow belongs to Carolina. Two seconds left. Tar Heels down by two. Get the basketball. It was a tough pass to handle. Down around the knees. Shot clock is off. This is Phelps. Everybody on their feet. Stackhouse. Oh. Harrison comes up with it. And the foul. They had some pretty good looks at the basket. Stackhouse with a shot from point blank range. Montross with a tip. Some concern on the North Carolina bench, but much too early for celebration on the Wake Forest bench. 16 seconds left, almost 17, 16.6, and it's a two-point Deacon lead. That was the fourth on Calabria. Harrison will be shooting two. This one's big. Both can big. push the lead to three. It'll take a three-pointer with 16 left. Well, now there's a number of different ways that you can get three points. I don't think that North Carolina necessarily has to go for the shot from beyond the three-point range. There is enough time that if they get the ball up the court quickly and get a quick two points, then they still have time in the game where they, they can foul or get a steal. So I think that Wake Forest has to be very careful. Now, another thing you can do, if you get it up the court and Wake Forest isn't ready to go defensively, you can get the ball inside to Stackhouse or to Montross. They might be able to score two and draw a foul. So you don't necessarily have to shoot it from beyond the three-point line. seconds. This is called on Harrison. And that looked to me like that was a planned foul. It sure did. That was an intentional foul. That's what we were talking about. You don't risk giving up the three-point shot. You commit the foul, the most they can get is two. I still, you know, anything you do at this point in the basketball game is a risky play. Remember a few years ago in the great overtime game in a at the end of the regular season between Wake Forest and North Carolina State. Wake Forest made that exact play, and North Carolina State made the first, missed the second, got the rebound, tied the game, sent it into overtime. I don't think Phelps has to miss the second, necessarily. There's still almost 12 seconds left to go in the game, 11.8. You make this one, you get a steal, you're in business. Missed it. Carolina gets it back. Is a two. Six seconds left. Calabria made it. Childress, good if he goes. Overtime.
Great shot by Calabria to tie this game. Rack up the clock. Put five more on. We're going some more after this from Bud Light. set to go. Carolina will have it first. Carolina jumped out to the lead at the start of the second half, but they trailed through most of the second half of this game. And they battled back. Tied the game with a marvelous play by Calabria. Williams. Advantage Tar Heels. cannot afford to get tentative. They shot with a great deal of confidence in the second half. Well, they've and got the first half for that matter. They've got the ball where it needs to be. <laughs> Owens left alone. Childress off the mark. player it's Harrison and Harrison I believe is bleeding now or is it a cramp it looks like a cramp where I mean, they're working on his leg and you can understand I thought I saw some blood but I didn't it's a cramp well, you can understand why there would be problems with cramps a game like this both these teams have played extremely hard second game in two days Wake Forest played the last game last night. They didn't get out of here till late. Wake Forest, we told you earlier, has allowed 70 or more points only eight times this year, and Wake lost seven of those. Championship Sunday continues tomorrow. Forest to match up against Donald Williams. So Rusty LaRue comes in to take his place. defensive ability. What a great steal by Phelps. That steal ties him for the all-time North Carolina steals lead. With 471 ties Lynch. Montross looking for the ball inside. Montross is fouled. You just feel North Carolina seizing control of this basketball game. Great job by Phelps to prevent Childers from getting the ball and making the steal. Now four fouls on Blukas. So Childress has four. Blukas has four. Montross at the line. He has 14 points. Stretches the lead out. Got a three-point lead. Wake Forest yet to score in the overtime period. Wake Forest hasn't really been attacking in the overtime period. Back to Childress. That's where they want the ball. Phelps all over him. Forces him left. And he lost the ball on the way up. Duncan. Montross with the block. Wake Forest that has to play from behind. And Wake Forest looks tentative offensively. Oh, 
Stackhouse. What a block by Duncan, and Owens gets it back. Dean Smith wanted goaltending. Wake Forest has to get a hoop, Tim. Drive by Childress. Duncan battles with Montrose. Oh, big guy wins. Eric gets it out to Williams. Montrose just took it right away from him. Carolina is going to try to work the clock with the three-point lead. Back to Williams. Childress has four personal fouls. And Williams is fouled. No, offensive foul. Dean Smith can't believe it. Left, they need a hoop desperately. Down by three. Wake Forest will have the ball. And if Wake Forest ends up losing this basketball game, you better believe they'll think about that free throw that Duncan missed down the stretch and the free throw that Harrison missed down the stretch. But North Carolina, what a great job to take advantage and get themselves back in a tie game. Now, here's the zone. Remember, Carolina was down by three with 16 seconds left in regulation. Tied the game and now leads by three in overtime. Blocked shot by Phelps. Phelps, excuse me, Stackhouse blocked the shot. How could they not call a foul on Montross and knock Lucas into the cheap seats? has made every free throw he's had. And he got a big block right there on LaRue. Watch the contact by Montrose. No foul call. Nice job by Stackhouse getting over and blocking that shot. And there's Phelps coming in and claiming the rebound. So now Lucas has to leave. So Harrison left with cramps. He's back in. Lucas goes out. Carolina now it's a matter of handling the basketball and then making free throws if you're Wake Forest and you're going to foul you got to do it early in the 35 second shot clock 110 to go Childress cannot foul you got to play good defense basket here by North Carolina might be enough under a minute to play the biggest defensive series of the game for Wake Forest Shot clock down to seven. No foul call there. Childress to LaRue. That's good for three. Here we go again. We're tied at 84. 35 seconds left in overtime. North Carolina going to hold it for one. There's a three-second differential in the game clock and the shot clock. Shot clock at 20. And in this particular situation, think about North Carolina and how well they've done on the offensive boards the entire game. If you're waking, you stop them. You've got to get the rebound. Phelps. game with an 86-84 win in overtime. It's the seventh time in eight years the Tar Heels go to the title game. One 
points, 10 assists, and he was spectacular. For North Carolina, Jerry Stackhouse, 14 points and four rebounds. And no points bigger for Jerry Stackhouse than the final two points of the basketball game. Takes the ball, powers it up past Tim Duncan. That was the winning basket as North Carolina prevails in overtime. Terrific game. The title is set. It'll be North Carolina and Virginia. We'll be back with some final thoughts right after this. Stay with us. In overtime, it'll be Virginia and Carolina in the championship game tomorrow. Well, let's find out what it looked like from upstairs. Here's Paul and Bucky. Thanks, Tim. And uh, one thing, my heart was beating. I guess I'm alive. A great Saturday afternoon, Bucky. I got to credit Eric Montrose. He picked off Timmy Duncan on that last play to allow Jerry Stackhouse to get three on the baseline. They really did. But the Stackhouse and the freshmen throughout this tournament so far have been outstanding. I don't ever remember when the rookies have stepped up as they have in this tournament. This doubleheader today, dynamite. Made up for yesterday. It was uh, Randolph Childers with 31. His last bucket came and last point points of the game came with about three minutes to play in regulation and then I thought the strategy may have backfired a little on Dave Odom at uh, the foul putting Phelps on the line he hits the first one the second one rebounded by Carolina and here's what happened next Dante Calabria takes it uh, strong to the hole and uh, boy I'll tell you what that's his biggest shot <laughs> he, Carolina all season he had a huge first half and was a little quiet in the second half that spin dribble today has been well used by both sides what a sensational play in traffic and this shot nearly went Back of the iron, uh, just a little, yeah, yeah. little bit strong. An eighth of an inch, <laughs> and it's over, and the Deacons are in the championship game. But that's the Ides of March. And that tied it, of course, uh, the shot by Calabria. Sent it to overtime, and then North Carolina goes on to win 86 to 84. So let's show you the brackets as this ACC tournament for 1994 unfolds. Virginia knocks off the top seed Duke. North Carolina gets the big scare in overtime, survives to meet the Wahoos. Buck, what do you think about that tomorrow? Well, they've split, and of course, uh, Virginia very tough defensively. Uh, they they got great play, I thought, out of everyone today. But uh, if if uh, Dean steps up as he did, Phelps will have his hands full. That will be the key matchup. If Phelps can neutralize Dean, I think Virginia's going to have a long afternoon. The Tar Heels seem to be taking off. Donald Williams, big baskets today when they needed them. Dean coaching against Dean, the freshman, playing for the Virginia Wahoos. And we will be back to the Charlotte Coliseum. There's your championship tomorrow starting at 2.30. From Joe set, it will be Virginia by virtue of its win over Duke, 66 to 61, and North Carolina over Wake Forest. The final score here, 86-84, Carolina in overtime. Huge shot by Calabria. I want to thank John Madry for the numbers. Dan Bonner, great job. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. So long, everybody, from the Charlotte Coliseum. At Duke Power, we like to think that the electricity we produce makes life a little better for people. Why, without it, what would you do with your washer, dryer, TV? <laughs> well, you get the idea. Think about all the ways you use electricity. And we think you'll agree that electricity from Duke Power is a pretty darn good value. Even at those times when you don't want to use it.